Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship at Grace Lutheran Church in Tomahawk, Wisconsin. It is the 24th Sunday after Pentecost. Serving you today are myself, Pastor Susan Christian, technology is Mike Wick, projection is Karen Torkelson and Sandy Wick, assisting minister is Don Christian, and our liturgist was Sandy Pellicori. So a few announcements this morning. One is it's that time of the year. The Salvation Army is looking for bell ringers for our local grocery stores. November 20th and 21st, that's a Friday and a Saturday, and November 23rd and 25th. If you can help, please call uh, Linda Halverson. Uh, her number is 714-453-4684, and I believe it is in the directory. Uh, for more details, see our December newsletter. It's been a hard year for all of the community service groups. Uh, a reminder that we have our parking lot Holy Communion service on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock. Uh, just turn your car radio to 104.1. And memory tree ornaments, it's that time of the year too. Order forms are in the November newsletter and in the entryway at church. You can also contact Faye Witalski. All right. And again, I say welcome. Our first hymn today is Jesu, Jesu, fill us with your love. One announcement that I had forgotten earlier, this week we need to send our prayers and sympathy to the family of Thomas Bailing. He died November 8th. Thomas was the husband of Sharon and father of Brittany Colin and Coleman. And also to the family of Stanley and Loretta Smith, sister and brother-in-law of Judy and Gary Calhoun. Uh, they died, no, Loretta died November 2nd, and November 11th, Stanley died. And Floyd Misner, brother of Judy Calhoun, died September 7th. 
Please keep these families in your thoughts and prayers, and may they be comforted with the hope of eternal life. We continue with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door for us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promise prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Righteous God, our merciful master, you own the earth and all its peoples, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter 1. Zephaniah, like the prophet Amos in last week's first reading, presents the day of the Lord as one of judgment and wrath. <clears throat> Descriptions of the last day in the New Testament include details taken from the Old Testament accounts of the day of the Lord. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guest. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently in their dregs, those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good nor harm, will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud, there that day will be the day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the for forfeited cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust, and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them. On the day of the Lord, Lord's wrath in the fires of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a full, a terrible end, he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
Our psalm this morning is Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born, from age to age you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, Turn back, O children of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream. They fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. For we are consumed by your anger. We are afraid because of your wrath. Our iniquities you have set before you and our secret sins in the light of your command countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The span of our life is 70 years, perhaps in strength, even 80. Yet the sum of them is about labor and sorrow, for they pass away quickly and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. We will now have our children's message. Hello, kids. Today our Bible story is called the Parable of the Talents. A parable is a story that has a teaching lesson in it. In the Parable of the Talents, Jesus tells us a story about three servants that has a lesson to teach us about using the gifts God gives us. A very, this, in the story, a very wealthy man was going on a trip and he needed someone to take care of his money. And he called three of his servants and handed each of them some talents. A talent in Jesus's day was money, a lot of money. In our day, we think of a talent as a natural ability to be good at something. Drawing, singing, dancing, maybe playing a specific sport are a few of those talents. Sometimes you may think of these as the only talents that a person may have, but there are other talents that aren't as obvious. Uh, you may be talented at being a good friend or being a good listener. Perhaps it's easy for you to fix things that are broken or solve puzzles, or maybe you have a keen eye for um, detail. Now back to this, the parable that Jesus told. The wealthy man told the three servants to take care of the money while he would be away. Two of the servants went to the market and they traded their talents and made more. But the third servant was afraid. So he dug a hole and he buried his talent and he never used it. Like the servant in the story, you may be tempted to hide your talent because of fear. Fear of making, maybe making a mistake, um, fear of maybe being embarrassed or maybe not being perfect. These are things I struggle with. Um, maybe you're afraid that you don't have any talent at all. Don't believe that lie, because each one of you has been given a special gift that could help someone else. If, you, if we are good at something, we should not hide our talent, but use it to the best of our ability. God gave us lives of love to share, not hide, not bury. When talents are shared, all are blessed. Think of what talent you have. And for each day this week, in what ways can you tell others about Jesus by using that talent? And remember the good news. God is with us. So even when you're scared, like one of the servants in today's story, you can go to God in prayer and ask him to help you. Let us pray. Dear God, help us to use our talents, whether big or small, so that others know you. 
Amen. May the Almighty God strengthen you to share his love. God loves you, and so do I. Second reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Though we do not know and cannot calculate the day of Christ's return, we live faithfully in, in the here and now as we anticipate the day when we will be given eternal salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now concerning the times and the sessions, seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not, do not need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a, a, like a thief. For you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober for those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet of helmet the hope of salvation for God is destined us not for wrath but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep we may live with him therefore encourage one another and build up each other as indeed you are doing word of God word of life thanks be to God Our gospel this morning comes from Matthew 25. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the Master of those slaves came and settled the counts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. And his master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. And his master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. 
But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for his worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you all from God our Creator and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Playing it safe. How many of us spend our lives trying to play it safe? Yet there is something to be said for the willingness to risk. Not always playing it completely safe. When you go on vacation, how many of you sit down and plan exactly the route you are going to take and have all the newest maps so you don't worry about any of the details? Or maybe some of you even use the, the map quest on the computer when you're, you're planning a trip. You are playing it safe. Being disciples of Jesus does not promise to be a safe journey. Disciples are called to, to take risks, to travel to new worlds beyond what is safe and secure. Our gospel text today is the parable of the talents. Jesus is telling the story of the master who trusted his servants with his property. To one he gave five talents, who made another five. Another servant he gave two talents, and he also doubled what his master had given him. Then there was the third servant that the master had given only one talent. That servant buried his talent and returned to his master the one talent. He risked nothing, so he lost nothing. Have you ever been given a responsibility so great and wonderful that it frightened you? That's what happened to the third servant in our gospel lesson today. The first two servants felt confident in themselves and realized that they had been given something special. And they found ways to be able to return even more to their master when he returned. But the third servant wasn't so confident. He was afraid to risk that which had been given to him. He was going to keep it safe and be able to give back to his master just exactly what he had been given. In the parable today, the word talent is used to refer to money. For the sake of understanding Jesus' story, let us understand that the word talent to mean gift, that which God has given us those things we are good at doing, and those things that we enjoy doing. We as members of the body of Christ, as disciples of Jesus, are called to be like the servants who, who took the risk and invested their master's money. God has given to each one of us many different talents. God calls us to, to risk using those talents to serve God through service to others in the world around us. Now, some people are teachers and some encouragers. Some people have gifts of mercy. Some have gifts of preaching. But each of us is given gifts by God, just like the money given to the servants by their master. 
whether it was five talents, two talents, or one talent. They each received something. Now, how often have we been told that we have a gift and we respond by saying, huh, me? I'm nothing special. I don't have any particular gifts or talents to share. And we call this action humility. But if this attitude causes us to take the gifts that God has given us for building up the body of Christ, the church, and put them on the shelf in the closet or hide them under a mattress, we're not being humble. We're being irresponsible and wasteful. The servant who hid the money was afraid of its master. <coughs> and we afraid of God are we afraid of God? Do we see God as being so far removed from our daily lives that we could not do anything pleasing so we don't even try? Do we see God as a condemning judge? Is it easier to do nothing than to feel guilty about whether we have done right? As members of the body of Christ, we are called to try new things in order to reach those who do not know Jesus. It means that we should share our gifts in church, in school, wherever we may be, wherever we might meet those who not, do not know the message of God's love. It means that we look outward to a world in need and do what we can to to, feel the hung to feed the hungry, house the homeless, and welcome strangers in our midst. God does not want us to live in a world of fear or building walls around ourselves to keep safe from the world. God wants us to invest our time and talents and treasures in ways that make us as disciples of Christ flourish and grow. God does not ask a lot of us. God asks us to dive into life and use the gifts we have to the fullest. Using our God-given gifts makes life worthwhile. God has given all of us gifts so vast that they can be terrifying. God gives us life. God gave us gifts to share. Most importantly, God gave us Jesus Christ. God loved us so much that he sent his only son into the world to live with us, to teach us, to die for us, to rise up for us so that we may have eternal life. What an incredible gift we were given a gift of pure love. Amen. Our next hymn is our hymn of the day, When Peace Like a River.
Let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of the church, ignite your people with the passion of your love. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, unify us across ministries, congregations, and denominations and refine us to participate in your activity throughout the world. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of creation, we stand in awe at the works of your hands and praise you for the beauty of nature. Bless the earth for your glory and restore its integrity where exploitation has caused ruin. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of the nations, sound forth your justice in the ears of all leaders. Increase concern for those who are most vulnerable, especially as international leaders forge trade agreements and cooperate to end human rights abuses. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of all in need, search out all who cry to you in distress. Scatter the heavy clouds of depression, chronic illness, unemployment, and loneliness with your radiant light. Send us as encouragement and signs of your healing. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of the stranger, stir up holy restlessness in us to extend love to to those at the margins. Release our desire for control and open us to learn from the perspective of others. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of the living and the dead, we give you thanks for all the saints at rest from their labors. Rouse us to live by their example, that saints yet to come may also know your love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this point in our service is when we take our offering. If you would like, please drop your offering off at the church office or mail it in. 
Our special offering for this month is the food pantries. We'll now have our offering prayer. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them that as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign, savior and spirit, be with you today and always. Amen. Our sending hymn is O Zion Haste. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>